Hey everyone, welcome back to Flying Yana. I'm Matt, and today we're going to be in the engineering department talking about our new 3D printer. We have with us Brandon, our engineer and head of the research and development department. Brandon, yes. you've worked with 3D printers for a while now. Yep. How have they been benefited us so far? So, I don't even remember how long ago, five, seven years ago, we got our first 3D printer. Um, and it was <clears throat> it was a little bit of a kind of homebrew-ish setup, kind of sort of. Anyway, the, the really short version is it was really, really helpful for prototyping because we could have physical pieces to bolt onto the engine, to you know, bolt up doing whatever we were doing, um, and we could refine our fitment that way. And then once we had it nailed down, then we could go to an aluminum uh, prototype to make sure that it's still the same, and then we could proceed with production. So it, when I first got here, you had to do many, many real prototypes, aluminum prototypes, work with a machine shop, all that, and that, anyway, it just takes a really, really long time. So this moves it along much, much faster. So. Time benefit along with uh, cost savings. Yeah, time benefit, cost savings, the design is just that much more refined. Um, and you know, so it takes a little, little while to get stuff to market, but we still get stuff much, much, much faster than if we had to do it all. Um, yeah. I did forget to mention, if you guys have, or gals have questions, please put them in the comments below, and we'll get to those throughout the uh, session here. So, that was our old printer. How is our new printer going to benefit us um, through the photos, prototype stages, or and what else can we do? So, the, the, new, the new printer is basically a step change. Um, it is actually roughly the same size in terms of print volume. And sort of, uh, but the print quality is hugely, hugely better. Uh, the accuracy, the resolution is much better, the surface finish is much better, um, and it's simply a much more reliable machine. Um, it, you know, knock on wood, but I don't think we've had a single failed print uh, so far, whereas you know, before we didn't necessarily have a lot, but certainly not everyone uh, went. And we can count this thing, you can leave it alone for the weekend, and it just does its thing, no big deal. The, the surface finish is, and strength, is such that we can actually use this to make end-use products, which we're really, really excited about. Nice. Yeah. So, we've mentioned 3D printer, do we have a brand that we're working with? Yeah, so we're using the Mark Forged printer uh, that we got from RevB. Um, RevB guys were super helpful, uh, and kind of, helping us figure out what printer we wanted, why this one was better, uh, all that kind of stuff, and basically everything they said was spot on, so it is fantastic. What kind of uh, materials, I'm not very familiar with 3D printers, so what kind of materials does this 3D printer use that would be different or more purpose-oriented for us? Sure. So this one uses uh, what Mark Forge calls Onyx. Um, it's basically a nylon that has chopped carbon fiber uh, in it. Um, and the carbon fiber it kind of fuses together as it's all melted down and the nylon fuses as it's being printed um, and that type of thing. So the short version is it's a lot stronger um, and it also deals with high temperature much better. So the um, there are a million and one different materials that you can 3D print with on, on most machines, on other machines. Um, but kind of the, probably the most common is ABS. Uh, so this material versus a normal ABS is about one and a half times stronger, and it's also about one and a half times, or the, the heat deflection temperature is one and a half times higher uh, than normal ABS as well. So short version, it's a much, much, much better material. Again, it also has the awesome surface finish as well. So if we were able to use this machine to have a product that would be sellable, um, is there different software? Uh, what are we going to need to do? Yeah, so uh, it'll take, um, I mean, this is kind of basic 3D printer stuff, but it'll take an STL file, um, and I think there are a couple of other formats, but STL is what we use, uh, out of basically any CAD software. Um, so it does have its own software that it uses to run the printer and come up with the tool paths and all that fun stuff. Um, 
So you design it in almost any kind of CAD-based software. Uh, you import it into this software and more or less hit go. There's a little bit of setup stuff you can do, uh, but it's mostly pretty automated. So the interface was nice. You didn't have to read like a whole children's book to get a product on yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was really pretty straightforward. It took very little time, even from just unboxing it, doing all the setup and everything. It was really pretty minimal time investment to get it up and running. Excellent. Good. Uh, let's see, what products could we offer? Uh, that is an excellent question. And, and we are looking to our audience for some suggestions there. So uh, any kind of input you guys have for stuff that we can print on this. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to do every suggestion that comes up. Um, some of them are more plausible than others. Uh, but we're absolutely looking for suggestions on, on what to, what we can design and print. Um, we've got a couple of samples right here. Um, the, the coolant reroute will not be printed on this machine, uh, but this is a good example of how we can print a, well, maybe not functional, but at least fitment-wise, a really good sample. Um, we could have it in a few hours, so we can bolt it on, make sure it fits. Um, this is a okay. prototype for our before our production. Correct. Yeah. So this is this is a prototype for basically for fitment testing, and it's huge, especially with the with something that's this tight and has so many constraints on it. It's really, really, really beneficial to do that iterative design, where you get you know okay, well that one's ninety percent there, but we need to tweak this, and so on and so forth. And there are other things that we do to kind of shortcut that as much as possible. Regardless, um, so we've got some that, that should be on the website here shortly, um, not yet, but very soon. Um, so these are these are all keychains. Um, we we're doing them in a, a couple different designs. Um, I believe our long term plan is to do different generations in the silhouettes, um, but it takes a little while to do that. So please be patient. Um, this right here is uh, the top lock cap that goes. Um, that goes on the on the roof flash basically. So we sold these for a long time. Um, the 90 to 02 version, I guess we still sell, uh, but the 03 to 05 Mazda discontinued. So now we are printing it on our own. Um, strong, really good surface finish. Uh, and anyway, we'll have those guys available soon. Um, this is one that we kind of come up with the idea a long time ago. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, a dipstick with a broken handle. So you can buy a new one, uh, but rather than do that, something a little bit less expensive, um, we've got our dipstick handle here. So, um, and actually briefly to go back on what we were talking about with the prototyping process, um, we, we did a lot of different designs, uh, Kyle really did a lot of different designs uh, for this shape down here to try to nail down what would work best. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but the short version is we just printed this portion of it. Um, so, cause that's all we needed rather than wasting time and material. So anyway, we settled on this, um, it wraps around there. It's got a little nub to hold it in place. So you can kind of see you pop it on like that and there's no wobble anyway. Really, really happy with this one. It'll be available shortly as well. Uh, but you can kind of see the surface finish um, is, I mean, light years ahead of other 3D printers. We we evaluated a bunch of different options and everything has pros and cons, of course. Um, but the surface finish is really what did it for us on this one. And that's resolution, correct? Uh, yes, mostly, yeah. And what the product is pushing out, I suppose. What the printer is pushing out. Yeah, yeah, this printer, is is very very solid there's a there's almost no flex in the print head and the bed and the, the slides and all that kind of stuff it's it's industrial quality stuff basically and um, they have an industrial version which is dramatically more expensive but um, it is a again a step change versus kind of the normal stuff out there excellent yeah good to hear do we have any questions kyle that we need to address not at the moment okay well, so we now know uh, how this helped us in the past, our old 3D printer, and what steps we're able to do uh, further with our new printer. So if you do have questions, like Brandon mentioned, please, or questions, if you have comments on uh, what products that you'd like us to possibly produce, 
and the constraints we have with our 3D printer. Please, let's go with uh, Tech At, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, we will distribute those to Brandon um, in a timely manner. So yeah, please. just email tech at flyingmiata.com. Correct. Sorry, I didn't finish that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, if there's no more questions. Well, well, thank you for helping us out with this and showing us more in depth on our printer. Yeah. Next to Thursday at two o'clock, we're going to talk about reroutes, coolant reroutes, why you need them, why you should use ours, and uh, a lot more questions, hopefully from our viewers, that you'll have those ready for us before next Thursday at two. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.